Hey, I'm Krista Wax. You are listening to MSP Sound on KFAI, and I have the personas via Zoom. Hey. Hello. 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 Hello, a little happy dance. How are y'all doing? Hey, we're keeping on, you know. Got our health and uh, got our music, you know. Better now that we're on KFAI with Krista Wax. Right. Multivitamins and fish oil. That's how I'm doing. There you go. Yeah, every day. Is that what you kids are calling it? Oh. Oh. No, we call it vitality. Call it health nutrition. Well, you have me all here tonight. <laughs> so, first of all, everyone's socially distant. I know we just said via Zoom. Everyone's in their respective corners doing their thing, doing their part. Thank you. Uh, very excited to have you back on. When I was looking back, I thought for sure it was 2019 when y'all had been on the show. And it turns out it was 2020. It still is 2020 right now. <laughs> you all were in, we were all in studio in a small room together in this year. Pre uh, feels, I should say. Feels pre-cold. like a century ago, doesn't it? Good times, right? Uh, many, many years, eons. But uh, hey, Minneapolis in January was a wonderful time <laughs> yeah your album was just about to come out and you're getting ready for your album release show and we had no idea what was coming or is still happening i just and and just to give you all a quick reward like wow you're the first guest to come back within the same year so hey. nice we we're honored hey, we're, there is no prize but <laughs> I don't think we've ever been prolific before, except Johnny. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. I think, I think we, um, I remember, Johnny, was that like the beginning of this year, like after after our release show, but before COVID when you called me? Yeah, that was like right after quarantine started. Okay. Probably like the very end of March. Once okay. I started to go like mostly insane, you know? Yeah. First insane. Yeah, first, uh, you know, lapse of insanity. Okay. I was going to say something about, like, jinxing it or something, because we were <laughs> we were talking about how we had all these big plans, and we were, like, we were so excited to just, like, you know, do a whole bunch of stuff and be ready to just knock out a bunch of shows and start touring, and, like, we had plans, and I was going to say something about jinxing it, but COVID had already started by then, so never mind. <laughs> But hey, we do have like 16 new songs that we're working on right now. Like, That's true. There yeah. has been some benefits. Yeah. Like none of them are done yet, but we have like 16 that are almost done. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole album's worth. It's it's Chester album's worth, actually. I feel like if there's ever been a time to do a double album, like, why not? <laughs> we have all the time in the world. And we're not going to stop writing, that's for sure. At the rate we keep buying guitar pedals, we're going to need to write more songs to justify them. (laughs) Some good quarantine purchases. Well, so I know, I mean, this is just a tough time for everyone, particularly music scene. And um, yes, you did not jinx yourself there. Unfortunately, COVID just jinxed everybody so it tops that but you all have been doing a lot of live shows and actually why you're on the show today is we're going to air one of your your halloween live show which i'm really excited about you had it on youtube yeah. you all dressed in costumes it was fantastic how first of all thanks for you know keeping that going keeping i mean it made me happy it was something to do on halloween so <laughs> So thank you. How how did the live streams come about? How are they going? I know it's not the same as an audience, but. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's just been a mostly selfish ambition. We just, we miss uh, playing shows so much. There's like, hey, w- let's just do it. Let's, you know, throw it out there. And if people want to watch us, then great. You know, we want to try to spread music as much as we can. And we want to jump around and be idiots. And yeah, two birds stone. Yeah, um, back at the end of September, um, I had started, so I work at a high school, and um, the, the, like, our first week or two that we were, we were coming back in the building for, like, this hybrid model, whatever that our district was doing, and um, 
so I was back in the building. And so we had all left so quickly. I had left all my, my personal things at my desk and I had a bunch of old, whatever folders and crap everywhere. And, um, I found this old show poster, um, from another band I played in that we were going to be having a release show, uh, back in at the end of March and it got canceled. Um, and I, I picked that up and I just, that hurt to see. So, um, I, I kept, I never managed to throw it out. So it was still sitting there for a couple weeks and it just drove me insane to the point where I was like, all right, we just, we need to play a show. I don't care how, but we're going to make something happen. And so then I just texted everyone. I was like, Hey, how do we feel about this? Cause I really want to. We had been practicing semi-regularly, you know, wearing masks, keeping, luckily we're, we were lucky enough to have a really like a pretty large practice space that is sort of a recording studio in and of itself. So it was, it was actually relatively easy for us to like, once we, you know, got past the initial first quarantine, we were able to kind of like start practicing semi-regularly like, like we had been. And I think that's when we all started getting that itch. Like we, we're in show shape again and we want to play a show again. And Corey was the one that came through with the idea of like, how come, how about we do a Halloween show? We had always talked about wanting to do that. We all like spooky stuff. We wanted to do some covers. And I think that's how that came together. And then the fun thing about being in a band with Corey is that they have all this like AV tech skill, both from their professional life and just like from their personal interests. And so Corey was like, yeah, I'll borrow these cameras. Like, we'll, you know, we'll set them all up. Um, I'll edit it. I'll mix it. I'll master it. I'll, you know, <laughs> chop the video together. And, and we were like, oh, sure. Okay. You want to literally do everything except for play the bass and the drums and the other guitar? Like, we're, we're, we'll show up. That sounds yeah. great. Yeah. You, yeah. We're, we're great at showing up. We do that all the time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I think it kind of just took a life of itself from there. It kind of came together relatively quickly over the course of a couple of weeks. And um, we just got really excited to, to play a show again. And then when we started standing there in front of these cameras, we were like, oh, man, this is really different. <laughs> it's way different, but I think it's, I think it's, you know, above all, a really cool experiment, you know? Yeah. Like, hey, this could be something we can do again, you know? And it's cool that we did it for Halloween. And we've been spending so much time, you know, in the space over quarantine. Like, it's nice to have the space, like, have a, a different mood, you know, just be a different setting. Because, like, that's the only place we've been in trying to, you know, create dimensions, create different emotions, writing and recording. It just, uh, the same, you know, four white walls can feel kind of stale after a while. So it's just fun to, like, just mess around with something new and create different feels in the, in the room. I don't know if y'all have been doing this, but part of what I've been doing to kind of stay sane over the summer has been like watching other bands live stream videos. So like there's a bunch of different services that do a really good job of that. We're all uh, big fans of this band, The Dirty Nil, and they did this like yeah. live stream world tour where they pretended to be playing different venues. They like put themselves up against a backdrop of like a, like a green screen. And we were like, man, like, we I think we got inspired by seeing all these other bands just trying to find ways to play a little bit and like share their music again. Um, I think it, it's been a really tough time for a lot of musicians. Musicians I know like a lot of people express like a lot of frustrations with you know whatever it is not being able to play, not being able to release their albums that they had planned, not being able to tour or whatever. And I think like seeing different bands do that is what been personally getting me through it. And so I was like, hey, maybe if we share our music, other people will dig it too. Absolutely. No, thank you for, I love it. It was super fun. And that was great editing. That was, thank you. it was just a well done show. And I was wondering how it was done. So thank you. Thank you for pulling a little peek behind the curtain. Yes, we specifically called it a virtual show because we weren't that that when it was airing live, um, we, we weren't actually there at the same time. Uh, we had filmed it a few days before. It is a whole, like the show is like, we played the whole set all the way through. Like that is consecutively the entire 40 something minutes that we played. Um, and then I, I gathered all the stuff because um, we, we don't have Wi-Fi um, in that space. So like we couldn't stream anything from there directly. Um, so I said, I'll just take it home. I'll throw it together as fast as I can in like two days and then have it ready for Saturday. <laughs> for Halloween. But yeah, oh. like we, we did perform it all live though it's not like a kiss live album or something <laughs> right right live live-ish right I, 
I think the fact that we have some very horrible stage banter in between is testament to that. <laughs> I stand by all of my stage banter. Everything I said was gold. That was so bad. Especially the things you cut out. <laughs> oh, comedy hour. You did your mic a couple times. I was like, nope. Mm-mm. We're not going to hear that. I haven't spoken in eight months and I will speak. I was swearing so much behind the drum kit. I'm very thankful I did not have a mic. <laughs> And a man one the, <laughs> exactly <laughs> one of the things that uh that i noticed when we were playing was that you know we, we would get into the song and it would feel supernatural just like a live show we're like a good practice you know we're vibing the energy's good you can almost sort of forget what's happening and like feel like you're playing a show and then the second we stop playing the song it all these cameras are just staring you in the face yeah, and the okay. ability to like play off a crowd or like see somebody laugh at your dumb joke just doesn't happen so everything feels very like it's just landing on a quiet room a couple of uh the band's girlfriends were handling the av text and they were like our only audience for the show and, and they they were Which, you know, i mean that's prob- been true for real shows before <laughs> that's true <laughs> i've played to fewer people than that <laughs> true that but yeah no it- it definitely felt like when we were talking about it, I was thinking like, oh, this might be like the worst of both worlds where we're like playing for a crowd, but there's nobody to feed off of. But it, it ended up feeling a little bit more, it, it felt like doing radio or like since I was a Vegeta from Dragon Ball Z, it felt like I was like training in like the hyperbaric time chamber. Like yes. you yeah. play a good show with no good crowd man. and think about how good of a show you can play to people. Yes fantastic reference very proud of you <laughs> and all that you do <laughs> yeah. for everybody that hasn't seen the live stream we were all different anime characters well except johnny oh, well okay kinda. well okay i was looking for a wig like a pink wig to be nurse joy from uh pokemon but That's i couldn't fine. find like you know the nice the long bubblegum pink wig so i just went as a general like sexy nurse in whatever and you know like and it worked out pretty well but this the the skirt was a little bit too short on my Disagree. costume well and so i i made sure to to wear some 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 basketball shorts just for for common courtesy because there's a lot of cameras going on some modesty yeah, shorts it, it was somewhere between nurse joy and lars ulrich <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, Great description. Uh, more swear words come your way, man. In the chat. There you go. There you go. <laughs> what are you going to do? You're all the way over there. <laughs> Why you little? <laughs> You're going to be Dave Mustaine. I'm going to fire you from the house. A fantastic guitar player. player. Who's in a very safety. normal band, a very normal guy, of course. Let's not say I can't take back. No, let's 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 keep the keep the keep the metalhead insults from just simmer down, simmer down. Look, kill kill them all is the best Metallica record, and I'm <laughs> tired of saying otherwise. Okay, the truth wow. comes out. Full honesty here on MSP Sound. I appreciate it. Be yourselves here. We love it. <laughs> so, any additional? virtual show is coming up soon or are you planning a few more or are you just kind of i mean the holidays are coming up so sure we have been overtake. we've been doing some new recording and i think we're gonna release one of those um some point in the future we might like kind of shoot a uh, a video to go along with it depending if we can uh can rig it up right we don't quite have a release date on it yet but uh, the song is all recorded at this point so we're, we're close yeah, yeah. I, I think honestly <laughs> honestly krista before you told us that you were a big fan of this Halloween show that we did. I think we were all kind of thinking like, okay, that was fun. You know, like, you know, maybe, maybe we'll do another one somewhere down the road. But now that, now that we know that people are digging it, maybe we'll have to do a Christmas show, New Year's, you know, uh, St. Oh Patrick's God. Day, three out of four of us are Irish, you know, so like we could just do a bunch of holiday live streams. No, I don't want to sign us up for anything. The recording is the next thing. We're, we're working on a single that we're probably going to release. We were saying maybe December, January range. Is that what we were kind of talking about? 
Yeah. The next band camp day, maybe. Yeah. There you go. There you go. I mean, everything's kind of up in the air because it, dep- it depends on how, you know, things are looking with, with COVID and everything. I mean, we have the whole song recorded, so it's just got to get mixed and all that. But, you know, depending on if there's another quarantine coming up or what, you know. Or, I mean, like, I had a part that I thought we should add. Like, I just got a, a xylophone, and I think there's a part where we could add a really extended breakdown, get it out to six, seven, eight minutes long. The song could be a lot longer. Um, we've Ooh, been getting a lot into free jazz in quarantine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've always no, thought of this as a fundamentally free jazz band. <laughs> I'd love to see us move in that direction. We're a band. <laughs> free jazz. We're glockenspiel, no xylophone. I'm sick of your glockenspiel. Whoa, I'll give you hey. five dollars if you can spell glockenspiel. Spell it for me. Glocken, it's spiel. It's like <laughs> I E L something. All right, you got me there. Next subject. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. All right, the spelling bee is over, and we have a winner. So thank you. Great job. And. <laughs> So a new single coming out. Y'all been working on some new music in between as well. Very exciting. Any other, like, what else? I mean, what else? I mean, it sounds like you've been doing a lot. You've been doing a lot more than I've been doing during quarantine. So anything else? Any weird purchases you care to share on air? Oh, oh don't get these kids started on their oh, gear. Did I spend a lot of time buying music gear. Oh, <laughs> I stepped into it. I stepped right in it. I, well, where you go? Joe and I, Joe and I got these... Um, like 1990s old rat pedals oh. just recently and they're really cool and nice. yeah we, we were we were thinking that we were like yeah we need to crank the gain up on some of these new songs and um i was like well we don't really have any like high gain pedals or amps going or whatever so um mentioning the dirty nil before um you know we know that they tend to like to use rat pedals for all those guitar sounds and so we're like let's just try that so yeah um, but quarantine's I, the best time to get like a shoegaze level pedal board going just like yes. <laughs> making all sorts of crazy sounds and hey i mean i, I don't have to take it anywhere but it's fine <laughs> They've been buying guitars left and right. Uh, we, 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 you know, those lights that we got for the space for the Halloween show have been kind of a fun addition to the to the the space too, just to be able to kind of like change from that that harsh fluorescent overhead lighting. I know Johnny's been like really lobbying for us to like get some mood lighting going in the space and we vibe out. That that actually really did do a surprising amount <laughs> in a way. Maybe we should get some hello vibe, yeah the like uv lamps in there going or something like that so we can pretend like we're playing an outdoor show you know oh yeah yeah where i'm at it's always sunny there you go beautiful i I have like those uv lamps in every room i thought it was a metaphor i'm like that probably sounds about no that i feel no that's why my room is really bright right here (laughs) (laughs) you like it really bright i like a dim lighting i don't like fluorescent lighting i would be getting whatever just some mm. lighting Same. a little bit more of a cave bear yeah <laughs> oh definitely <laughs> well anything else you want to tell us about the fun halloween show before we play it i think oh, that's i it. have a question oh go yeah. ahead <laughs> joe go ahead no no i had nothing no. okay <laughs> <laughs> I was like, super excited about your cover of Tegan and Sarah's Walking with the Ghost. That, I mean, that that made it for me right there. It's the first track. And I was like, oh my gosh, that was amazing. That was so I love that album. Learned. My favorite We're album. really gratified with that. I th- we were trying to come up with spooky song ideas. Um, we, had, we knew we wanted to do a Misfit song. Joe and I are big, you know, grew up in punk rock and love the Misfits, uh, all their music. And so we knew like we would definitely wanted to do that. You always got to do a Misfit song on Halloween. They kind of own Halloween. And then we were we were looking around for other stuff. We had covered Teenagers by MCR before. And we were like, we should bring that back. Um, actually, you know, watching Corey play MCR songs was kind of like sort of part of the band story in a little bit of a way. So it was kind of cool to come full circle with that. I don't know if, Joe, you want to tell that story or not. Oh, yeah. Because um, I saw Corey do um, some uh, MCR songs for Halloween. I think it was the year previous, and 2018. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that's right. And uh, and it was like, oh, 
Oh, I could do that. Yeah. Hey, you don't need to. Hey, come on. Let's just do that together. I like Les Pauls. You like Les Pauls. Let's make a deal. Like. Corey was playing drums in that band, but they got to sing uh, for this Halloween show. And and it was like, I remember Joe telling me afterwards, like this, you know, we saw this band and like the drummer came up and sang and it was super good. And like, we should be in a band with that maybe like. Oh yeah. Like, no, I was, I was dragging you and Johnny. I was like, check this. like, no, here comes the song. This song is the one that, that Corey sings. <laughs> of course so, it yeah. took me like four shows to actually like say something to them. But. <laughs> we think you're cute. Yeah, <laughs> you want to be in a band with us? Yes or no? <laughs> yeah, that, that was pretty much it. <laughs> well, yeah. So the Tegan and Sarah song was just the one that we all really liked. Like, I think I my, was like to walking my dog, and it just kind of came to me, and I was like, "Ghost, spooky, that's great." And I was, you know, "Hey, do y'all want to do this Tegan and Sarah song?" And then everybody was like, "Yeah, great, we love that song." And then it was actually kind of challenging. Like you, you I, I don't, I don't know what I was expecting because they're obviously like great musicians and great singers, but. There's, it's one of those songs where there's like a lot of really subtle stuff going on that's kind of hard to mimic for like a two guitar like chunky rock band. Um, so it was it was it was definitely like a little bit outside of our wheelhouse, which I think was good. It forced us to work hard on it and, and make it sound cool. We we had to approximate a song that uses a lot of synthesizer without a synthesizer. So that was that was the biggest challenge. But, no, I was mainly like disappointed that we didn't end up changing the lyrics because i thought you know <laughs> we we're gonna change the we go. the chorus to i was making whole grain toast i <laughs> said mm, that's quite delicious or something like that you know <laughs> we didn't do that but we had a perfect opportunity <laughs> to do that um so did we have Oh, we might be losing our minds a little bit. That's why we've managed to finish recording exactly one song all year because we keep getting sidetracked with this. <laughs> this is what happens every practice. There's Look, been a lot of conversions. There, there's a band hey. called Spoon. Why not a band called Toast? I was in a band called Toast once. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> then we found out that there was already a band in Minneapolis called Toast, so we changed the name. You see, oh. the people have spoken. Hmm. So a parody okay. album is coming out soon. That's oh, very soon. That's what I'm. Weird Al Yankovic, we're coming for you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Some fighting words there. Well, thank you all so much for joining me and for allowing me to play this awesome Halloween show on KFA. I want to keep the live music spirit alive where we can as well. I miss seeing everybody in studio and well, we were we were in studio together earlier in January. It <laughs> feels like a lifetime ago, but thank you all so much for joining me on Zoom and yeah, let's rock on. Let's listen to this awesome persona. Awesome. Thank Thanks, Krista. Thank you. Happy Halloween again. Happy 